Uh, let's have some more now on the UK's new chief rabbi, Ephraim Mirvis, will today take over from Lord Jonathan Sachs, who's standing down after holding the post for 22 years. The role traditionally seen as representing the wider Jewish faith, Rabbi Mervis, who was born in South Africa, has previously served as the chief rabbi of Ireland. Well, uh, we can go to the St John's Wood Synagogue, uh, where Rabbi Mervis is being installed and join proceedings, and that is uh, him. Well, there's Ed Miliband, the leader of the opposition. You can see that. Let's uh, listen in there, and we can also speak to our correspondent, Andy Moore, uh, who is in St John's Wood. Yes, you uh, join us in the middle of this ceremony to install the new chief rabbi. Uh, the man speaking at the moment is the former chief uh, rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs, who's been in the job uh, for 22 years, as you said. So let's just listen in. Uh, this is his farewell address. The mood of the community. Sometimes it's a tikiya, a clarion call, summoning people to a collective task. Sometimes it's a shivarim or a teruwa, a sound of tears as we weep, whether for ourselves or for others. A shofar is always simple and plain. No great art went into its manufacture. No one, to my knowledge, has yet written a shofar concerto. A shofar moves us simply because it is our cry to God. And at Mount Sinai, where the people heard call shofar chazak ma'od, it was God's cry to us. Rabbi Mervis, let your voice be clear and simple, calling us to the greatest vocation with which a people was ever charged, to be God's witnesses in an often wayward word, world. And never forget, those extraordinary words from the Unatane Tokev prayer will be saying in just a few days. Uva shofa gadol yitaka, the great shofa... And we can see just on the left of the screen the incoming man, Rabbi Ephraim Mervis, who will be getting up to give his own introductory address shortly. Uh, there are lots of uh, special guests here. Uh, Ed Miliband we saw earlier on. Uh, Prince Charles is representing the Queen. Uh, there are guests from the across the world of politics. Uh, Sir Malcolm Rifkind is here, uh, Ed Miliband we saw, and leaders of other faiths all here for the installation of the new man. A, a very rare service, this. Lord Jonathan Sachs has been in the job for 22 years. Uh, there have been only 11 chief rabbis in the last 300 years. In a, during that time, and there's been uh, more than 50 prime ministers. So uh, the chief rabbi seems to stay in the job a long time, and that's certainly the anticipation for the, the, the new man here today. Yom on Yom Kippur, the high priest placed his hands on the Se'im Hamishtaleach, the scapegoat, and over it confessed the sins of the people. We used to have in our office a cartoon of the man who served as chief rabbi in early Victorian England, Chief Rabbi Solomon Herschel. And in those days, I know no we can one see the congregation, uh, Ed was. Miliband, Sir Malcolm so Rifkin, some of the guests I was uh, telling you about. Let me tell you a little bit about the uh, new the man in the job, Chief Rabbi, Chief and Rabbi of the UK and the Commonwealth. Uh, he's 56 years old. He's married uh, with four children. He was previously uh, Chief Rabbi of Ireland. And he says his new job, there he is, is an enormous challenge. And he says one of his priorities will be to concentrate on uniting the various uh, groups in the uh, Jewish faith. And he says he wants to concentrate on that which unites us, not on that which divides us. No one was with him in the tent of meeting when he went to secure atonement in the most holy place. Beneath all the public work, of this most public of religious offices is the private communion you have with God when you pray, when you learn, when you open yourself to heaven in the very depths of your soul. Those lonely moments are moments where you are honest, open, and vulnerable. And that is where in the privacy of your soul, you will hear the Shekhinah, the divine presence, whispering to you through the texts of our tradition and the wisdom of our sages. 
you will hear, Rabbi Mervis, the call beneath the noise, summoning you and through you us to our sacred task as Mamlechet Kohanim Vigoy Kadosh, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. It's that private relationship with God, not now, newspaper headlines. Now, according to the headlines, friends of Ephraim Mervis, he's a good manager and a good pastor. He's formerly the head of the British Jews, head of the uh, British synagogue, the British wing of the Orthodox uh, Jewish Church in the UK. There are some wings of the church, uh, the liberals and the ultra-Orthodox groups that don't recognize him, but he says he wants to reach out to them. He is traditionally known as the figurehead of the um, British jury here in the UK. We know what it feels like to live in a dirat arai, a temporary dwelling. I have a strong suspicion that when God gave us that command, he did not have England specifically in mind, <laughs> because that's when you open yourself to the wind, the rain, and in the cold. In this ceremony here today, the uh, religious parts of the service are entirely in, Hubr in Hebrew, uh, but as you can hear, the addresses are in, in English. Uh, the men are in the main body of the church, uh, with the women upstairs in the gallery. Uh, in the Jewish church, only men can be rabbis. There we can see Prince Charles representing the royal family at this occasion. Our festival of joy. I have always believed and acted on that belief that Judaism is not just for Jews, but for the world. So said Moses, so said Isaiah, so said God to Jonah and Jeremiah. Our task is to be true to our faith and a blessing to others regardless of our faith, regardless of their faith. And the stronger we are in our Judaism, the greater will be the blessings we bring to the world. And if we were to ask, what is the greatest message we can bring to the world at this specific time? of unprecedented change and of great danger, not just to Israel, not just to Jews, but to all of us. It would be the message of Sukkot, the one festival that according to the prophet Zechariah will one day be celebrated by all of humanity. And what Sukkot is saying to us is this, that you can live in the midst of great insecurity, exposed to all the winds of change. But if you sit, Betzela de Mehemnuta, under the shadow of faith, you need feel no fear, for God is with us. And oh, we in can the midst see uh, of the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, Sir Bernard Hogan, how there. They will shortly hear from uh, Rabbi Ephraim Mervis, who says also one of his important uh, concerns is to reverse the falling membership in the Jewish community. And we'll be hearing from him. He'll be giving his address in a little while. Thank you very much. That's Jonathan Sachs, uh, the outgoing chief rabbi there. And we'll be back to hear from Ephraim Mervis uh, when he speaks a little early on this afternoon. The new chief rabbi of the UK, Ephraim Mervis, has been installed during a ceremony in London. He takes over the role, traditionally seen as the figurehead of British Jews, from Lord Jonathan Sachs, who stepped down after 22 years. Rabbi Ephraim Mervis said he was delighted at his appointment and was looking forward to his new role. On this auspicious and historic occasion, when I humbly take on the mantle of the 11th Chief Rabbi since 1704, I offer two prayers. First, a prayer of thanksgiving. I express my gratitude to the Holy One, blessed be He, who has guarded and protected me from the time of my birth and upbringing in South Africa, through to the years of my studies in Israel, unto the time when I had the privilege to lead great communities in Ireland and the UK, through to this special day. Ephraim Mervis, the new uh, chief rabbi. The new chief rabbi of the UK, Ephraim Mervis, has been installed during a ceremony in London. He takes over the role, traditionally seen as the figurehead of British Jews, from Lord Jonathan Sachs, who stepped down after 22 years. Rabbi Mervis said he was delighted at his appointment and was looking forward to his new role. On this auspicious and historic occasion, when I humbly take on the mantle of the 11th Chief Rabbi since 1704, I offer two prayers. 
First, a prayer of thanksgiving. I express my gratitude to the Holy One, blessed be he, who has guarded and protected me from the time of my birth and upbringing in South Africa, through to the years of my studies in Israel, unto the time when I had the privilege to lead great communities in Ireland and the UK, through to this special day. Ephraim uh, Mavis there, but our correspondent Annie Moore is at the St. John's Wood Synagogue in North London, where the installation ceremony is being taking place. Andy. Uh, yes, the service has just ended here. Uh, Prince Charles was the guest representing the Queen. Uh, other guests here uh, were Michael Howard, uh, Ed Miliband, uh, Sir Michael Rifkin, former politicians here. Uh, a lot of the great and the good here for this very rare ceremony. Now with us is uh, Steve Pank, President of the United Synagogue. I mean, what did you think of the address? We heard little there from the new man. I thought it was a fantastic address. Uh, he spoke at length, uh, but with great passion and vigor. And he talked about um, building new communities. He talked about doing good deeds. He talked about increasing education. And his catchphrase at the end of each of these bits was, come with me. And it was a great kind of call to arms for the whole community to uh, come and join him and be part of it. I thought it, it was really inspiring. The other amazing thing about uh, Chief Rabbi Mervis, feels good to say that actually, the first time I've said that publicly, um, is he spoke without a single note for quite a considerable time. And uh, it was very inspiring. I thought it was great. He's a man with charm, obviously, uh, a, a man who can tell jokes. Will he be able to reach out to the, the wider community? I think so. I mean, I, he has done in his own community, which is very large, the, the Finchley community. And I think he has uh, a very nice touch about him. He has been Chief Rabbi of Ireland before, so he knows what the job is like in a much smaller setting. And I think he will have that touch. I think he will reach out to people and he will bring them in. They'll want to come and support him. I really believe that. And what about within the Jewish community? He said there had been ill will in the past. Perhaps yeah. will he be able to engage the, the various wings of the Jewish community? I think so. I, it was lovely to see here today the entire spectrum of the Jewish community, right to the far right, to the far left. Everybody was here. And I think uh, his, his message was, we've got to work together, we've got to do things together. There's a lot more that we can do together than separate us. And I think he'll be emphasizing that to try and make sure people do work together. Uh, I, I'm very positive about that. I, I think he's made a very good start. Uh, I think uh, that was evidenced by the people here today. And he also talked about the 26% of the Jewish community that don't go to a synagogue yeah. regularly. Uh, can you bring those in? Well, that is that is really the challenge, I think, to be able to, to, to do that. Um, and there's a great opportunity there. I think he stands a very good chance of doing it. I think that um, he uh, is coming in at a time when there is a bit of a resurgence in certainly b quite big parts of the community. He'll play on that. And I think he'll create opportunities to involve people. And you know, it might be through social things. It might just be through connecting with them in another way. But I think he will bring them in. I think it's, there's every reason to believe he will be able to do that. Okay, Mr. Bank, thank you very much. And as we heard earlier, he's only the 11th uh, chief rabbi since the early 1700s. In that time, more than 50 prime ministers have come and gone. Uh, from St. John's Wood Synagogue there. Thanks a lot, Andy.